Welcome back to Hover Unboxed. For today's video, I'm finally able to expand upon the IPC testing featured in our day one coverage. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do any IPC testing with the 3900X because this exact chip here actually died uh, during my review of the new third gen Ryzen processor. So if you want to hear more about that, then feel free to watch that video. But yeah, this little guy here is dead. But the good news is I do have a replacement now. So I was able to go back and compare the IPC performance between a single chiplet with eight cores enabled to a pair of chiplets with four cores enabled in each one. So all that testing will be in this video now that I have my replacement 3900X. So it's really time for some more in-depth IPC testing, I think. For those of you unaware, IPC stands for instructions per cycle, and it can be a good indicator of an architecture's efficiency. Traditionally, Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs have offered high IPC coupled with a high operating frequency, and that's really the best combination for maximum performance. Although AMD is still clearly trailing when it comes to frequency, they do appear to have really closed up and possibly exceeded Intel's IPC performance, and that's likely why so many of you have been requesting this particular test. To see just how much headway AMD's made here, we're gonna neutralize as many variables as we can, while also keeping things as realistic as possible. The first and most obvious step is to remove the core frequency from the equation, and to do this, we've locked all CPUs at four gigahertz. Any type of boost technology has been disabled, and this means no cores can clock past four gigahertz, and all cores are clocked at four gigahertz. Then for the Ryzen 9 3900X, we've disabled two cores in each chiplet, taking it from a 12 core part down to an eight core part. So all CPUs tested have eight cores active, but whereas the 3700X has them all in a single die, the 3900X spreads them across two dies. The third gen Ryzen CPUs have been tested on the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme using the latest BIOS, which uses a GSA 1.0.0.3 AB. Then for the first and second gen Ryzen CPUs, they've been tested on the ASUS ROG Crosshair 7 Hero and the Coffee Lake CPUs on the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra. All configurations use the same G-Skill Flarex DDR4-3200 memory using the Extreme Memory Profile, and the same MSI RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trail was used for all the testing. This is purely a for science type benchmark and is in no way buying advice. The Coffee Lake CPUs do have a clock speed advantage, but that doesn't necessarily make them the best choice for gaming and real-world performance. To find out which CPU you should buy, please refer to our recent Ryzen 9 3900X, 3700X, and 3600 reviews. First up, we have the Cinebench R20 multi-core score, and here the 3900X and 3700X provided roughly the same score, making them both around 14% faster than the 9900K when matched clock for clock. Moreover, they were both 18% faster than the 2700X, and that's a significant improvement in IPC performance. Here we see a 13% performance uplift for the third gen Ryzen parts over the 2700X, and this meant they were also 9% faster than the 9900K, so pretty incredible stuff for these new Ryzen processors. Here we see that the dual chiplet design of the 3900X actually improves performance in the VRA benchmark by a 2% margin over the 3700X. Not a big difference really, but it was consistently faster in this test. This meant when matched at the same clock speed, the 3900X was 6% faster than Intel's Core i9 9900K and 13% faster than the 2700X. This time the 3900X was 3% faster than the 3700X when looking at performance using the Corona benchmark. This made the 3900X 5% faster than the 1900K and 16% faster than the 2700X. That's pretty impressive stuff, but let's move on to see how things look in a few games. The first game we're gonna look at is Battlefield 5, and here we see despite a hefty reduction in clock speed, the 1900K still manages to take out top spot. The 1% low performance was still very impressive, and here the 1900K was 9% faster than the third gen Ryzen processors. When looking at the average frame rate, we see that the 3700X was 8% faster than the 2700X, while the 3900X was 13% faster. This means that even when matched at the same clock speed, with the same number of cores, the 3900X is still 5% faster than the 3700X, which is very interesting. We see that the 1900K again takes out top spot, this time in Far Cry New Dawn, beating the 3900X by a 5% margin for the average frame rate, but it was 10% faster for the 1% low result. 
However, what we should probably focus on here is the impressive step forward AMD has been able to make. Here the 3900X was incredibly 20% faster than the 2700X, while the 3700X offered a 16% performance improvement, and that's a very impressive generational leap. Even at 1080p with the RTX 2080 Ti, Total War Three Kingdoms is mostly GPU bound. Still, we do see some improvements, the 1% low results, and again, Intel comes out on top, but as I've said, we're mostly GPU bound here, so let's just move on. For those of you who missed my discussion regarding the World War Z results in my original third gen Ryzen content, in short, the game received an update that dramatically improves performance, but for whatever reason, the Epic Store didn't roll this update out to me for over a week after its initial release. The good news is this update sees Ryzen processors perform significantly better, and now the 3900X is able to roughly match the 1900K in our IPC test. Again, the dual chiplet 3900X was faster than the single chiplet 3700X, this time offering a 4% bump for the average frame rate. This meant the 3900X was 14% faster than the 2700X, while the 3700X was 9% faster. Another game that I decided to check out is World of Tanks, and this game has been recently redesigned to take better advantage of core-heavy CPUs. Interestingly, when matched at the same clock speed, the 3900X provided better 1% low performance than the 9900K, boosting performance here by a 4% margin, though the average frame rate performance was much the same. The 3900X was faster than the 3700X, improving performance by 4%. This again made the 3900X 13% faster than the 2700X, while the 3700X was 9% faster than the 2700X. The last game that I'm going to look at is Rainbow Six Siege, and here the 1900K was a good bit faster, at least when looking at the average frame rate. I mean, it was just 5% faster than the 3900X and 8% faster than the 3700X, so not a massive margin, but it was still faster. That said, the 1% low performance was similar across the board, and here we're looking at another mostly GPU bound game with these higher end CPUs. Something I discovered when first testing the Ryzen 7 3700X was the much lower than expected write memory bandwidth. After speaking with AMD, they filled me in on what's going on here. Basically, AMD's made a compromise here as client workloads do very little writing. So rather than use this space to improve something that isn't required, or at least not going to be fully utilized, they've invested this silicon real estate in more beneficial ways to achieve performance gains. The end result being that the core complex die IO die link for reading memory is 32 bytes wide, but it's only 16 bytes wide for writing. However, because the 3900X has two CCDs, it features two lanes for writing, and that brings the peak bandwidth back up to around 50 gigabytes per second. Moving on to cache bandwidth, and here we see the 3700X and 3900X are virtually identical, and both offer substantial gains for L1, L2, and L3 bandwidth over the second gen Ryzen 2700X. Here we see L3 cache bandwidth has been increased anywhere from around 40 to 50% with the third gen Ryzen parts. We also see a 30% improvement in L2 bandwidth and an almost 100% increase in L1 bandwidth. That's an incredible performance uplift and it certainly would go a long way in explaining why we saw a 100% performance gain in applications such as WinRAR. As for memory latency, well, not much has changed here. If anything, we see an increase in memory latency from second gen Ryzen and we see this when looking at DRAM and L3 cache latency. The DRAM latency is 50% higher than that of the Core i9-1900K, and this will be partly responsible for the difference we see in gaming performance. Another reason for the slightly lower gaming performance is core latency. Still, when compared to second gen Ryzen, the new third gen architecture is a massive improvement. For the best match cores, we're seeing a 30% reduction in latency and at least a 26% reduction for the worst cores. This all means best case, the core to core latency is actually reduced by 35% for the third gen Ryzen processor when compared to the Intel Coffee Lake architecture, and that's pretty good. Problem is, worst case, the latency is 54% higher, and that really isn't very good, especially when playing latency sensitive games. Okay, so it's pretty clear AMD's made a big step forward with third gen Ryzen. We really knew that from the moment we first tested the 3700X and 3900X. We were also expecting good things, especially after AMD wowed the world at Computex this year, claiming a massive 15% uptick in IPC performance. And they weren't exaggerating either, with cores and clock speeds at parity, the 3900X provided an 18% improvement 
over the 2700X in Cinebench's multi-core test, then 13% for the single core test. We saw a 13% improvement in V-Ray, and then a 16% improvement in Corona. And then when you average all that together, that actually gives you a 15% improvement in IPC performance. You can't really use games to measure IPC performance, but they're still interesting to look at for clock for clock comparisons. One obvious issue with games is that they're not always CPU bound, and even when they are, the degree to which they are CPU bound can vary. For example, we saw very minor performance gains in Rainbow Six Siege and Total War Three Kingdoms, but in those two titles we were obviously quite heavily GPU bound. The 3900X was between 13-14% to faster than the 2700X when testing with World of Tanks, World War Z and Battlefield V, and that's pretty close to AMD's 15% claim which again doesn't necessarily apply here. Then of course we saw a much more significant 20% performance improvement in Far Cry New Dawn. Given more time, I'd actually like to go back and include a Skylake X processor in these results. That could be really interesting. Though uh, it probably makes sense just to wait for the third gen Threadripper pass at this point before making that comparison. Not sure about that one. Maybe let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate what we do at Hire Unboxed and you want to support the channel more directly, then you can jump over to our Patreon page, you'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, and the monthly live streams that Tim and I do. Anyway, thank you for watching, I'm your host Steve, and I'll see you again next time.